context, yes and or no. And she would mention this, by the way, in her speech. Three, what do you notice about the mouth movement? Like how she moves her mouth. Does she talk with, you know, how we speak Ukrainian and Russian? Like, uh, we speak like that, usually. <laughs> or she opens her mouth widely. Pay attention, okay? Because to speak like a native speaker, you need to imitate native speaker, okay? So you're today watching it her, yeah, like eating with your eyes. Okay, do they use gestures with their hands and what sort? How big and how often? Okay, so pay attention to her. Everybody knows what is gesture, yeah? Okay, does she use gestures or not? Or, or she's very, you know, like sitting like a soldier, you know, and, and, and not making a movement. Okay, um, what do you notice about their mouths we discussed? How are they standing or sitting or moving? Yeah, pay attention to how she says. Does she uh, put on her um, legs together, her feet together, or she's very open, you know, okay? Pay attention to how she sits. Okay, uh, how close are they to one another? Okay, so uh, how close she tries to approach you or me, okay? Uh, do they touch one another and how and where? You know, very often we are like, when we are in class, I don't know what about your school classes, but your teacher can, I know from some students, teachers can even beat you with rulers. <laughs> you know, or can like, you know, pat you or tap. Oh, okay, okay, very good, very good job. So pay attention, is it appropriate, think about this, is it appropriate for every culture? Is it okay to touch like in every culture, okay? Uh, how loudly do they speak? You know, like um, many Americans, you will pay attention. And when we were in Canada, you, you can uh, track and you could see that um, the pronunciation of the sounds itself, um, it's louder than our language because sounds are very open and you need to speak louder. Usually you do. Okay. How fast? How fast she speaks today I really ask her to speak the same way as she would uh, have spoken with native speakers so she won't stop she will speak fluently so as if you are a native speakers okay so pay attention does she pronounce every single syllable does she pronounce every single sound or she's eating them how she pronounces and, and while you are listening to her you make notes uh, would be very good if you will make notes and write samples examples okay um, uh, and uh, about rhythm and intonation so what about her intonation do they speak the same as we speak in Russian because we speak very like English intonation especially American English it, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, okay, and very emotional. So it's different from our language. So if you want to speak English as a native speaker, you need to copy not only their pronunciation, but intonation and rhythm, okay, how they speak. Uh, what do you, uh, what noises do they make which are not actual words? Like, uh, pay attention, does she have words, parasites? Like, Actually, okay, well, oh, oh, wow, you know, interjections, sometimes uh, using interjections or not, it's okay, she might not use them in general, you know, and the last but not the least, it's like, what other things do you notice? So maybe you would notice in Laura something what is not mentioned here. So you also, you're welcome to write here, okay? Yeah, you can write the explanation. It's clear? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Do you have some questions? No. Yeah, unless, like, everybody understands the rules, everybody remembers. Vlad, can we speak any other language except English? No. De tiempo a tiempo, Vlad puede hablar con Julia Español, Vova Francés, Leo Español, Francés, Alemán. Vova knows Spanish very well. Yeah, that's why today we made rules Japanese or English. So you cannot speak English or Spanish, English or French, because you can't, you know these languages. So you are cheaters, I know. So only these two languages, right? Japanese or English. Yeah, everybody understands, right? Yes? Okay, can we start? So what is the topic for today's class? 
how to sound and behave like a native speaker, okay? Okay, so how to be understood everywhere in the world, especially in English speaking countries, like how you need to pronounce and what cultural characteristics and values you need to have, okay? Because we will speak not only about the language, but about culture, okay? So I'm giving the floor to Laura and yeah. And she's ready to talk. <laughs> okay, so one of the first things, if you want to focus on being uh, able to speak like a, a native speaker, you need to understand the culture. Our culture is very, very different. And some of you who have been classes with me before know that when we talk about our culture, my culture is very individualistic, okay? Everything's about the individual. Your culture is much more collective. And you may not think that you're very collective, but when you compare your culture to my culture, it's very different. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other. Hello. <laughs> They're just different, okay? So one of the examples is, for an American, time is very important to us, okay? So when we communicate, when we talk, I don't want you to sit there and think about the perfect sentence because about five seconds into it, I'm gonna stop listening. I'm gonna start looking at somebody else, okay? For us, the biggest point is I want to know what's in your mind and what's in your heart. Just tell me. You're not going to speak perfect English. I don't speak perfect English. Okay, my husband will tell you, I'm an English teacher, but he watches all the time, and I'll do something, and he'll say, oh, look at you, the English teacher. You made a mistake. A lot of times, we do not follow our own grammar rules. Okay, so it's good to learn those rules, especially if you're in school and you have to take your test, but when it comes to be speaking like a fluent or a native speaker, a lot of those grammar rules really don't apply. Now think about your own language. You push words together. When I first came here, I was looking in the dictionary for the boy. I couldn't find it anywhere. And finally I realized it's sa the boy. It's two different words, right? So we do the same thing. We put things together. We don't say, I would like some candy. We say, I'd like some candy. Okay, so we use all those contractions. We make everything really short because Time is important to me. Tell me, tell me what you wanna say. Don't say this long sentence, okay? The other thing is that we drop a lot of words. So if I say, what is your name? I don't expect you to say, my name is. I expect you to say, John or Julie, okay? You don't need to repeat it back to me. In class, you do that. For your teachers, you do that. But when it comes to actually speaking with a native speaker, we don't do that, okay? It's very short and sweet. And I think before I've talked to you about the, the principle of KISS, keep it simple, stupid, which means like, oh, I need to keep it simple, okay? Even when I was in the Army and I went to a school specifically two months long just to learn how to make presentations, just to learn how to speak, two months, every day, I learned how to do that. And one of the main things was is to keep it simple because if you're talking to somebody, what is your goal? that they understand you, right? So if I get up here and I start using all these really big words, you're not gonna understand me. So why am I talking? It's just la 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 la, right? So it's my responsibility as the speaker that you understand me. So when you speak with a native speaker, that's what I wanna know. It's just, just tell me what you think. Make sure that I understand you and don't try and be perfect, okay, with your language. The second thing is, don't be afraid. Like I said, we make mistakes. I don't want you to sit there and just, you know, not do anything because I don't know who you are. Just tell me what you think, okay? So jump in there like it's a, a pool of cold water. Just jump in there and do it, okay? Don't worry about all the mistakes. I think another thing is to make sure that you listen. Listen to a radio, listen to the music, you know, watch uh, movies, do it all in English. I listen to Ukrainian news. Now, it's really fast, and sometimes it's about topics I don't understand at all. But by listening to it, my ears start to learn it, and next thing I know, I'm speaking it, okay? We cannot speak a language until we can hear it. So some of the things that we have to learn are the differences between some of the words like bid, bad, bid, those little differences, and the only way that we can learn to speak those is if we hear them first. So practice listening. Okay, 
even if you're like playing a video game, have some English music on in the background because our minds learn even when we're focused on something else, okay? Reading aloud helps you because you hear your own voice or you can even record your voice. Listen to a native speaker and then you say it and record it and listen to the difference, you know, and see if you can pick up what the differences are. Um, I think some of our pronunciation is very important. I talked about how we push things together. We also drop out letters sometimes. So when I say walk, do you hear the letter L? Not really, walk, uh -huh. talk. A lot of times we drop those letters out. Or we can say that they're silent letters. How about doubt? You write it with the B, but you don't hear it. Uh -huh. So just like you guys don't say ho ro sho every time, you say how sure. You know, I remember trying to write that the first time and I kept putting a T. And my teacher was like, there's no T there. And I'm like, but I hear a T, you know? So sometimes we don't say things like they're written. So listen to the pronunciation and the differences there and how we say certain things. The other thing I would say is in American English, we have names for the letters and we have sounds for the letters. And sometimes we use the name of the letter. Like you say, isolate. We don't say eh, the sound of it. We say I, isolate, okay? And there's a lot of words like that. Hi, thigh, we use the letter I a lot of times. Okay, feet, E, feet. So just because we have the sound of the letter doesn't mean that we use it. Sometimes we use the name of the letter. So again, that's listening and that's for the pronunciation, okay? And you, as you listen to movies or songs, you can pick up a lot of that in there. Now, I would say that if you're watching movies, be careful of the words that you learn because the movies are not real life. They're fantasy, you know? And so a lot of times they speak in certain ways and they say certain things that really are not real life. And sometimes you can learn a word in a movie that's a bad word. We call it a cuss word, okay? And in the movie, they say it a lot, but in real life, we don't really say it a lot. And when it comes to business, because you guys are gonna grow up, you're gonna get into business of some kind, you're gonna work. In business, we don't like to use cuss words. Okay, so if we're in an office and we're working together and you use a bad word, I'm gonna look at you and think, how stupid is he? He doesn't know how to communicate. So I'm not gonna respect him as much and I'm not gonna think as good about him. So if you're out hanging with your friends and you wanna use a cuss word, that's one thing. But when you get into the business environment, I would suggest not using the cuss words, okay? Because we kind of look down on it. I don't know, maybe if you were a construction worker, you know, they might expect you to cuss, yeah. But actually, in a lot of jobs in America, there are rules that say you cannot cuss. And you know how in the movies you always hear the bad word that starts with the F, the F word? You know, you know what I'm talking about, the F word, yeah? There are some places, some cities and some states that if you say that word out loud in public, they can give you a ticket, a fine, straf. Yeah, because that word is really bad. And sometimes those words, you have to understand the history of them. For that word, they use the word mother in front of it. And basically that word says, you're so bad that you have sex with your mother. Yeah, so when you hear some of these bad words, you need to understand what the history is behind them in the culture. And do you really want to say that word? You know, you might not want to say that word, okay? Idioms, idioms are very important. In America, well, when I first came here to teach English 13 years ago, I would explain an idiom with an idiom. In America, we have so many idioms because there's so many different cultures and immigrants that come into our country. So you can't learn every idiom, but what's important is can you recognize them? So if I were to say you, you can't see the forest for the trees, am I really talking about the forest and trees? Not really. I mean, we're talking about English, so what could I be talking about? You know, so sometimes that context is really important, but it's okay to ask. If I say something you don't understand, stop and say, wait a minute, I don't understand. Can you say that again? We expect that. If you just sit there and go, I'm going to think, yeah, it's kind of stupid. You need to ask me. We have an idiom that says, the only stupid question is a question you don't ask. We expect you to ask questions. And we actually have this communication process, okay? I'm A, 
I say something to say you, Leo. He's B. So I A says something to B, and I'm going to expect him to say something back to me. Oh, Laura, this, this, and this. And I'm going to say yes, or I'm going to say no. That's our communication cycle. Okay? So when I look at you and I'm talking, I'm looking at your eyes. I'm looking to see if your head is nodding. I'm looking to see if you're answering me. Remember here it said eye contact? For Americans, we love eye contact. I remember my mom and dad saying, look at me when I talk to you, you know, because it's really, really important. If you don't look at me when I'm talking to you, I think you're not interested in what I'm saying. I think maybe you're bored, or I think that you're disrespecting me. Like, no, I'm not listening to her, you know? So eye contact is really, really important in America, you know, and it means that you're listening to me, you're engaged in me. Why am I talking if you're not listening to me? So if you don't look at me, I'm probably just going to like eventually stop talking, okay? There are things in your culture that are very different from my culture. For example, you can all talk at one time and someone will say, Slushity. Everybody stops, they listen, and then everybody talks again. In my culture, if I tell you listen, I'm angry. I think you're not listening to me and I'm saying listen. And if I'm your mama, the next is probably going to be a hand upside your head or something. Because you're not listening to me, yeah? But in our culture, we usually speak one person at a time. Okay? Because I want to respect you. Remember, it's about individualism. So I'm going to listen to you. So if he's talking while I'm trying to listen to you, I'm thinking, he's disrespectful. He's not being very nice. Because he's talking, we need to respect him. If we respect him, then he's going to respect us when we communicate. And it's all about that individuality, you know, versus the collective. When I ask you a question, what do you think about this? I don't want to hear, oh, what he said. I want to hear your opinion. It's one thing that's very different in our schools is in our schools that we have this reasoning and I want to hear your opinion. If you tell me what the book says, I'm not going to be happy. I want to hear your opinion. What do you think? What's important for you? What on the paper jumped out and bit you, we would say. You know, what matters to you? So a lot of those kind of things all come into play when you're trying to speak like a native speaker, is you need to be very direct. That's another thing, is we speak in active voice. Remember, I'm saying you, you, you. We don't really speak in passive voice. You know, if I start speaking in passive voice, something is wrong. I'm trying to be very careful. I'm afraid of a situation because we're always very straightforward in active voice. Do you make notes? They're all mm -hmm. just staring at me. <laughs> yeah. You're inspecting Book everything Danchik I do. Is Only Bogdanchik is making notes, and Alina. Yeah. Now, one of the things I would suggest is on the internet, there's a site called Urban Dictionary. Have you ever heard of it? Urban yeah. Dictionary? Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. If you hear an idiom or if you hear <laughs> slang, you can go to Urban Dictionary. Now, it's very important to know the difference between British English and American English. It's like the difference between Russian and Ukrainian. There's a lot of words that are alike, but there are many words that are not, okay? Yesterday, a, a girl uh, in our village, she's visiting, and she speaks British English, and she came to talk to my husband and I. And there was like five times I had to stop her and say, what? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Because she was using British words, which I have no idea what those words are. Yeah, so she had to get explain them to me, okay? So British English and American English are very different. American English, very casual, very straight to the point. Tell me your idea. British, very formal. Yeah, they're gonna use the third person. They're gonna use that passive voice. You know, and when I listen to a British person, I just think like it's a professor and he's so formal. Yeah, we wanna be informal. I wanna know you. If I'm talking to you, I wanna know you. Okay? So that's how my opinion of what, how you can be, you know, speak like a native speaker is understanding all those things. But the first thing is culture. Culture, culture, culture is very, very important. Things that are considered positive in your culture are considered negative in mine and vice versa. So, for example, in your culture, if you cut corners, Okay, it's an idiom, cut corners. You do things the short way. In your culture, it's like, oh, good, man, you save time, you save money. That's a good thing. In my culture, someone who cut corners is a cheater, and you don't trust them. 
You know, maybe like somebody who's building a building and they cut corners, they didn't use enough cement. That building could fall down. So we don't like that. Yeah. So it's just differences. Yeah, by the way, do you recollect if, uh, some of our last classes, we were learning idioms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Laura uh, mentioned that idiomatic language, it's one of the specific when you need to speak like an native, if you wish to speak like a native speaker. So native speakers use lots of idioms. Uh, we're talking now about American and uh, British native speakers, right? Everybody understands, right? So uh, they use lots of idiomatic expressions, right? So do you remember, do you recollect some idioms uh, we learned previously? Big cheese. Uh, big, big cheese. Big cheese, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hot tamale. Yeah, then we got a lot of those <coughs> for that same yeah. thing. Yeah, any other boss. idioms you recollect, you remember? Use your noodles. Mm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use your gray matter. Yeah. Okay. See, we have idioms, like I said, to explain idioms. You know, you have one idiom, like the big cheese, and I could probably tell you 10 more that mean the same thing. We like to say the same thing in many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Any other idioms? Cool cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Cool as a cucumber. Bread and butter. Cry of spilled milk. Mm. Uh huh. Okay. I really understand that one now. When I got a, came here and I had a cow, you know, and she kicked the bucket <laughs> and the milk spilled, and I, I was like, oh, I really understand this idiom much more now. Now, we use a lot of food in our idioms. We also use a lot of sports, and especially in business, you'll find both of those a lot. With most of my students here, we study a lot of idioms all the time. Yeah, and those are, you know, most of my students were IT, and some were doctors, you know, because they have to deal with Americans a lot. And I've had a couple students who were in groups who didn't think it was very important to learn the culture, and they just learned the language. And I can say that this one American company, they fired two of those guys out of the, the program or out of the project because they didn't understand the culture. Yeah. Let me give you an example. An American says, you know, uh, here's an assignment. If you could have it done by Wednesday, that would be great. In your culture, you're thinking, huh, if I, if I want to do it, when I do it, I'm going to do it. But really what the American is saying, do this by Wednesday. But I'm respecting your individuality and I'm being polite. If you could. I'm acting like you have a choice, but really, you don't have a choice, especially if I'm the boss, yeah? So one of the things that some of my students, these two guys, had a problem with is when the Americans would say that, you know, kind of, if you would do this on, on Wednesday, it'd be okay. They, they thought, well, I don't want to do it. And so the American would come back and say, did you do it? And they'd say no. And the American's like, why are you not cooperating with me? Yeah. So remember, in our language, we don't have we. Yeah, so that's not how we're polite. And we respect the other person as an individual. So just because I say, do you want to share your answer? I'm not really asking you for a choice, but I'm, I'm trying to be polite. I'm saying, tell me your answer, okay? So again, there's those differences in how we're polite and how we're not. Yeah, yeah so you need to be very polite. Okay, so do they need to share what they wrote down? Yes, so uh, did you pay attention to Laura's gestures, like, yeah? Like pronunciation. Want to answer? I'll tell you, I don't want to answer. Ukrainians are more like coconuts. You don't really give a lot of information in the beginning. And when you get to close friends, you give that information. About every yeah. point. So you need to discuss with your partner every point, okay? Every point. And add what you don't have. You talk together, okay? You talk together. Yeah. So speak about every phrase. You talk together. You talk with Anna. You talk with Anna. You talk with You talk was very interesting person, Vlad. <laughs> talk together. Yeah, you talk together. You're discussing? Yeah, discuss more. Like how she became. Did she use gestures? Like, like you know, don't like to tell before. Yeah, she'd like to share. Yeah, 
you know, like wider and louder. You understand? Yes. Love. Love. You are in charge. Talk to her. Yeah. You are talking. Yes. Yeah. Who? Who had a question? Boba, you had a question. Can you hear one another? Okay, very good. Nasta is talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, are you are you coming to the end? Yes, you need to discuss. Ah! You need to discuss every single point. Yes. Also, I would appreciate if you mark details. Okay. Okay. Examples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if you if you wish to have this paper, um, not spoil it and take it home. Don't worry, I will give you extra. You, you can write both in your copybook and uh, in this paper. Okay. So did you finish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can't hear no buzzing, so I assume you finished. Okay. Um, any 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 comments about the first point? I will stand here. So any comments about uh, facial? Um, Expressions and eye contact. What did you write? Like volunteers, yeah? Who would like to mention? Who would like to add? The moving the mouse a lot. Okay. She was very emotional. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Very emotional. She will actually, he, she will like speak. Uh, uh, for she, it's easy. For her, it's easy, especially yeah. in English, yeah. you know. For <laughs> Americans in English, yeah. yeah. Easy sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Okay, what else? Anything else you mentioned about facial expressions? Mm -hmm. She take a uh, short oh, sentences, uh, short uh, words. Uh huh, short mm -hmm. sentences but long words, long yeah? Long words, big words. Okay, can I? Okay, yes. Like uh, what I mentioned, she was looking for one person like, for five, to, like ten sentences and Yes, so she, she had eye contact, right? Uh, uh, is, is there somebody who I did not have eye contact with? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I did once, and for you it was kind of hard. I had to look back at the, uh, yeah, so eye contact, yeah. Okay, so what about uh, uh, eye contact we discussed? What do you notice about mouth movement? Do you have some extra? Uh, did you mention something extra from mouth movement? Yeah, just the sounds that we make, our mouth moves in different positions, you know, whereas when you speak Russian, your lips kind of don't move as much. Yeah. Did you mention that your lips move a lot? I think I heard somebody say yeah, that. Yeah, and uh, a lot of uh, hands uh, a lot uh, show mm -hmm. different uh, gestures, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so what about gestures and, and to, uh, hands and movements? Uh, she used her fingers a lot. 
Uh -huh. Fingers a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like this and this and this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that these are thumbs and these are four fingers. Are these are thumbs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So, how are they standing or sitting? Uh, almost in one uh, position. position. Uh, and she has uh, uh, moved on the hands. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Anything else about uh, her position? How she's sitting? No? You didn't say. She's she relaxed. She's relaxed. relaxed. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was tapping her foot like uh, as if she was stuffing the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Pay this attention. I have busy it. legs, yeah. Uh-huh. I have a lot of energy, yeah. Okay. So uh, another thing might be is that my arms and my uh, knees are open, which means I'm very relaxed. I'm very comfortable. Yeah. So I remember when I was watching the Ukrainian news, the girl telling the weather was standing like this. And in, in my culture, this means... I'm not confident, I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm very uncomfortable. But that's not what it means in your culture, yeah. So it, it kind of, I had to get used to some of your body language because your body language is actually different than kind of what we do. Maybe, know? maybe it was her first time with you. Not that I understand. Maybe she, I watched her time. for like a year, and she was like that almost every time. I don't know why she stood that way. <laughs> yeah. But each culture has different things, you know, like when I was living in Korea, they didn't really stand. They would squat down. Their feet were very flat, and they would just kind of squat down on their feet a lot. But they didn't have chairs, you know, and those, a lot of those things around, so that's what they were doing everywhere. You know, so some people, you know, in cultures, they put their hands on their hips a lot, or they put their hands behind their back. So every culture kind of has a specific way of how they stand or how they sit, different things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, how loud uh, did she speak? Not so loud. Mm. Like louder than you speak Ukrainian? Yes. 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 So why do you think? Sometimes he's a lot of Sometimes he's a quiet. Softer. Yeah, and Vova, when you speak Ukrainian and when you speak English, do you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah, so what's the difference? Uh, in uh, English, you can uh, it and quietly and uh, uh, very loud one sentence. But in Ukrainian, uh, only or loudly or uh, uh, quietly. Ah, say okay. Sentence. Okay. So about the intonation and rhythm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think about? What did you track? What did you spot about intonation and rhythm? Yeah. Her intonation like uh, straight American and she has very good intonation because she is learned, uh, she uh, from America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, a anything else you spotted uh, about the intonation and yeah. rhythm? Yeah. No? No? Okay, so now it's time for extra. Maybe something is not mentioned here and you... Uh -huh. Non-stop, a good yeah. phrasing, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially as a, a teacher, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mentioned that when they speak, they use it in more, um, yeah, like in more formal. Formal, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I got into trouble, I remember I went to a village and I spoke in a church and I used the active voice. Oh, the Babushnik were all upset with me <laughs> because they do the, the passive voice, the we, you know, and I was being very direct, yeah. Okay. They were and not anything happy. <laughs> else specific you mentioned? Yeah, because we ran out of time, okay, we don't have much time. Um, I would like you to turn your uh, hand out where you have engaging the emotions, okay? So I also would like to share with you this material today. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, some points about Abraham Maslow, hierarchy of needs. Have you heard about this pyramid before? No. Ah, you showed, you showed us a presentation of the... Okay, I showed you presentation. Research, research, uh, yes, I did. Yes. Okay, we have a very good memory. Okay, any idea? Just, there is no right or wrong answer. Just, I would like to try to elicit your ideas. 
Like, give me an idea. What do you think? What is this pyramid about? I don't know. Is it like something that, that is necessary for, uh, like, you know, uh, conversations? Okay. So Nico thinks it's something necessary for conversation. Okay. Yeah, okay. See your point. Essential. Okay. Uh, this, these are essential points yeah. needed for conversation. So yeah, okay. it could be like clear and, you know. Okay. The conversation can, could be more clear. Okay. What else? Any, any other ideas? How to speak with people. How to speak with people, how to communicate. Okay, any other ideas? So, uh, you could read. Um, Ilusha, would you like to read? Yeah. Uh, let's start from the bottom. From Put shoulder worms with the seat. Security and safety, competence, uh, prestige, and the eastern. Love, freedom, and belonging. Self, fulfillment, uh, understanding. Yeah. Can you tell more now? Okay, I will provide you with a vivid example. Vova, you would like to comment about I this think pyramid? Uh, this pyramid about uh, uh, um, movement, uh, about uh, candle flag, yes, no. Verb? About rope uh, and... Uh, Action? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Lara will share with you a little bit, but just think about, if, if you have at the bottom, the logical needs, food, shelter, and warmth. So here is about uh, poor countries, like uh, third uh, world great countries and uh, rich countries. So why uh, in some countries, okay, in the world, people think about learning languages, um, investigating something new, research, um, opening new boundaries, uh, going to the uh, theater, cinema, art, okay? And in other countries, let's take for example Africa, people don't people don't think about art. Majority, we're discussing about majority. People don't think about art. People don't think about learning other languages. People don't think about self-esteem, but they think about what? About food. 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 Water. Water. Money. Yes. So if people don't have physiological needs, which are food water shelter right like if homeless people like i haven't seen many homeless people visiting my classes i think they're more interested in um uh being fed like you know to have food and um not to spend time outside and then the next level goes security and safety competence prestige and esteem and then love feeling of belonging and of course self-fulfillment afterwards and understanding okay so uh, here if you will read the stats there are lots of highlights how to be uh, understand people very well if you understand their needs and necessities better if you understand Maslow hierarchy of needs then of course you will be more successful okay or could you tell us a couple of words like they teach this in uh, America at uh, high school like I don't know uh, if they teach you here at high school if yeah. we have like very close to this close close to yeah. this subject yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh, this is kind of one of the foundations of what we would call like psychology of, of people so here you know like with the homeless people that's what my husband and i do is we work with the homeless people we have a, an idiom that says an empty stomach has no ears oh okay. that's a very good idiom by the way write down jot this down an empty stomach has no ears. How can you interpret this? If you are hungry and you come to my class, would you listen to my, you know, preaching a lot? Yeah. To my learning, uh, uh, teaching you idioms? If you are starving, will you think about food or about, you know? Of course you would think about food. So for those while Lara is uh, talking, Everybody can have a treat. You can have pizza. <laughs> yes. So if you have dirty hands, go and wash your hands. If not, then take uh, a piece of pizza. Uh, in this way, in such way, you will remember muscle hierarchy of needs better. Who doesn't need to wash hands? You can take. Help yourself. Okay. I believe it's not too hot, but it's hot in, inside and outside. So you're just. Okay, Laura, you, you can share. Okay, so like when we go to feed the homeless, you know, we could go with them and we could take shampoo and soap 
you know, but how is that really going to help them? They're having to fight or steal, you know, to get money or to steal food out of the bazaar in order to survive. So they're not thinking about how clean their hair is or if their nails are done. You know, they're thinking about food, okay? So one of the ways that you can use this in business, you know, is if you're working in an office or you're working in a job and somebody has just seemed really, really stressed, then you might want to work down the, the pyramid here and try and figure out what's causing them a problem. So in our life, we have food, we have a place to live, we're safe and secure, you know, we're not living on the streets, we don't have to worry about somebody beating us up at night, right? And we also know that we know certain things and we feel kind of confident about who we are. But what if all of a sudden you lost your apartment or your house? What if you were sleeping on the street all of a sudden, you know, and then you had no food? Could you really think about your English classes or, you know, what, what uh, profession you might have? No, you're going to be thinking about that food, that shelter, the warmth, okay? So when you think about a pyramid, if this down here, if the base, the foundation is not good, the pyramid's going to fall apart, you know? So when we go to help people, we need to start with the basic needs. So say that you have a friend, and they have a big crisis going on in their life. Start working up. Do they have a place to live? Did their mom or dad maybe kick them out? You know, that's the most important thing other than, oh, well, I'll, I'll think about you tomorrow. Bye. You know, it reminds me of a story. There was a young student that I knew that was going through the university, and he was from a very poor family, and he didn't have any money. And so he visited one of the big churches here, and he went to the, the pastor, the priest, and he said, no, I haven't eaten for four days. And they said, oh, you're suffering for God. God's going to bless you. And they turned around and walked away. For me, that made me really angry because that's not what really was what we're supposed to do. This person is starving, so we should help them. Now, it's not like he made a, bad, a bunch of bad decisions and he caused this problem. You know, he was working. He was going to school. He just didn't have enough money because his family was very poor. So we took him out to eat and we bought him groceries. You know? So sometimes when you try and help somebody, you need to figure out what is really the need that they have. And that's where this comes into place. You know? So telling somebody that you love them when they have no food, it doesn't really matter. It goes in one ear and it goes out the other. Yeah, one more idiom, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You can try to jot down all idioms. Okay. Who can repeat the last one, the latest? An empty stomach uh, has no ears. That's An empty is. stomach has no ears. And the second one? It goes in one ear and okay. out the other. Yeah, you see? So I fed you, now you will need to talk. Hey. So this is like Maslow hierarchy of needs. Yeah. So first you eat because empty stomach has no ears. Huh? Yeah. Everybody listen again. An empty stomach has no ears, okay? So, Nico, how do you understand this idiom? Like when you have uh, egg for like days, you can, yeah. you, you, if, can like, you can think about something like, you know. If this you know, first bottom higher, level, some simple food, something yeah. else. Uh, first level of Maslow hierarchy of needs is not fulfilled, you cannot go higher, right? You cannot go higher, yes? Okay, very often people uh, joke about the marriage, about uh, friendship, about different stuff that uh, they say, oh, you love one another, but when you marry and you have nothing to eat, your love will disappear. Have you heard it sometimes? Yeah. No. No? Yeah, so first you need to study hard, right? I expect you to be very smart. So you need to study and, and then you need to marry, right? Yeah, because you also know uh, this is one more difference between our culture and their culture, right? Do you know when uh, kids become independent in America? When they leave the family. When they're supposed to leave the family. At what age? 18. Ask Clara. 17 or 18. I was out of the house at 17. And we expect that. I told my kids, do you need to start work? And you need to get oh, out of the right. house. So we will talk Re about this. Remember about our culture. What's important to so us? Why are you Individualism. Laughing? Yeah, individual Individualism. independency. Yeah. yeah, we will discuss, this is just the beginning of the topic, which we will discuss on the 20th of July, because we will talk with Lara, we will discuss a topic of money, 
And if you have a possibility to read uh, Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then maybe okay. some uh, something about uh, American culture, about part-time job, how students work, and why students work, and why they are independent and don't live with parents, we will discuss it with you, and we will speak why it's why it's really like i uh, for instance i started working when i was at the college and i could um earn enough money for the living you know and i felt really strong and independent because i could afford everything what i needed you know so it really g gives you uh to look at yourself from another angle yeah do, so do you know how old i was when i had my first job can you guess 14. seven years old was when i had my first job I would get up at four o'clock in the morning and I would deliver newspapers riding on my bike to make money. And then when I got to be 12 or 14, I started babysitting. Yeah. So we, we kind of put this into our, our children as part of our lifestyle. I didn't kick my children out of the house because I don't love them. I did it because I do love them. I want them to be independent. I don't want them to always come running back to mama. You know, they're, they're grown adults. They need to do what they need to do. So but again, it's about that culture. Deviated a little bit from the topic. That's for your food for thought because 20th of July, we're going to talk about money, actually. Mm -hmm. How to save money for your dream and actually uh, time uh, is money and many other topics, okay? So uh, because we ran out of time, I'm sure we would talk more. You're really great, yes, and you're like interested in all. In, you are not people who, what's the idiom? About yes. ear? In one ear, yeah. Well, you were trying to say something, yes? Did um, you want to share? Can I go with what? Yes, sure. Okay, so, so in one ear, out the other. Yeah. Okay, so you remember all idioms? You jot them down, right? You know the plan for twentieth of November, and you know the plan for this month. With me, we're going to. Uh, watch lots of unabridged authentic uh, copies. We're going to discuss a lot about uh, native speakers, both uh, American English and British English specific. I will give you both. Uh, be ready uh, to uh, work a lot uh, during uh, very interesting activities, okay? Uh, accomplish all the tasks and I see you as usual uh, by schedule, by your schedule, but not tomorrow, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't come tomorrow, mm -hmm. you come on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Apple. Uh, could you could you pass this around, please? Oh. No, it's yeah, not apple. It. It's uh, very unusual. If you like it very much, uh, we can share with you recipe. A vegetable is in this. Um, Hi, is this? Internet. It's sweet bread. Corizia. There, cinnamon is in there. Yes. Cinnamon is in there. You can smell it, Vlad. Yes. I taste. Ah, you taste. <laughs> you yeah. one hour earlier. Yes. Did you like this sweet bread? Yes. Yeah. So you can't say what's in it, because you know, right? No, he did Ah, oh, he's heard in... Huh? No, 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 it will be cheating. Leo might know what's in it. Yeah, Leo, I, I can't don't, remember don't, if I Don't tell, don't tell. Yeah, he knows, definitely he knows. Who came to my house for 4th of July two years ago? The ginger, no? No, no, no ginger. No, it's not ginger. So what's the vegetable? I went out to my garden, I got this vegetable, I prepared it, and I made this... Bananas. Vegetable. That is not a uh, vegetable. vegetable. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, okay, I release you the secret, okay? I release the secret. So this is squash. Can you, yeah, sure, help yourself. Another, everybody got the piece? Yes? Another, another name for the squash. Another name for squash, I'm showing you. This is here. Zucchini bread. <laughs> Zucchini, zucchini bread. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is zucchini is a sort of squash. Yeah, so zucchini it's the same as squash. It's green, you see? And this is made of zucchini. Main ingredients here is zucchini, but you cannot taste them, right? Yeah, very delicious sweet bread. Who wishes you can take photo very easy to make? Yeah, it's, it's actually it's my Lara's great grandmother's great recipe. grandma's recipe. Great grandma. Okay. You can give her so anything. So who needs you can photo the recipe? I put this here on the table. Okay, guys, you were wonderful. If you have no questions, see you um, on Wednesday or on Saturday. Do you remember? Yes. 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 Y